let's introduce a concept of access management, which allows us to control who can see, modify or interact with specific files in an organization. We'll start with a basic permission model, defining users as owners, editors or viewers for folders and documents. Owners have full access to view, edit and manage permissions for resources. Editors can modify but not manage permissions and viewers can only view certain files or folders. Now that we've quickly gone through the roles, let's explain the inheritance principle. If you have a permission for a folder, it automatically applies to all documents within it, no matter the level of nested folders. This initial setup forms the foundation with a clear hierarchy and rule simplicity. The straightforward model is both easy to maintain and understands, but lacks the flexibility needed for complex use cases. We'll take it one step further in the next step. So let's look at our first OpenFGA model. You'll notice and have, I have an fga.yaml file open in VS Code and conveniently there's also an OpenFGA plugin that lets you display these fga.yaml files correctly within VS Code. And on top of this, we'll find the model. The model is written in a domain specific language or DSL, which allows us to create the exact authorization model that we need. Below that, you'll find some tuples, which is data that we can use in combination with the model to make some authorization decisions. And lastly, you'll find some tests to make sure that the model is doing what we expect it to do. So looking at the model, we'll start with the schema version um, and move on to creating some types. The first one is a user type, which is straightforward. We can assign a user as a user. Um, next up, you'll find a folder and document type, which mostly look the same with a small difference. Um, they both have a parent, um, which can be a parent folder. They both have owner, viewer and editor relations, which can be directly assigned users. So a user that you assign as either an owner, a viewer or an editor. And they both have a can edit and can view relation, which are permissions, if you will, where you'll see that a can edit permission is granted to anybody that is assigned as an editor, anybody that's assigned as an owner or a user that has the can edit from a parent folder is also automatically defined uh, assigned that can edit a relation. Um, the same thing is true for can view, anybody that has been assigned as a viewer or anybody that can edit the folder or document should also be a viewer because if you're an owner or an editor, you should also be able to view the documents. The only difference between this folder and document type is that for viewer with the document, we've also specified that anybody that is a viewer from the parent should also be able to be to view the document. So if you are able to view a parent folder or a parent parent folder, you should also be able to view all of the documents within that folder. Um, next up, the tuples. I've said this before. This is some data that we can use in combination with the model to make authorization decisions. And this is where we'll define actual users to actual folders or actual documents. For example, the user N is the owner of the root folder. The root folder will be the parent of a document called welcome and the user Bob is the owner of the document welcome, which is placed within the root folder that is owned by Anne. So when we test this out, we'll first look at some permissions for the user Anne. Um, so she is the owner of the root folder, which is the parent of the document. So it should make sense that Anne, the user Anne um, can edit and can view the document within its root folder, within the folder that she owns. Um, but user Bob does not own the folder root. Um, he, they only own the uh, document. So they should not be able to edit or they should not be able to view it because we haven't assigned any permissions um, related to the folder to the user Bob. So if we run this using the open FGA CLI, FGA, model test, and then we'll pass along the tests. Um, step one dot YAML. You'll see that we have run one test, um, which is exactly what we've defined here, the test for basic example. Um, and that test has done four checks, the two assertions here for user N and user Bob, and you'll see that all of them are passing. So the model is behaving as we expect it to. It's a first great step and a first great basic model um, for OpenFGA. Let's move on to a more advanced use case.